Okay, I'm not going to normally do this for every little thing that happens during this game of Days of Decision 2, but I thought it would be nice since we've done our first, first thing has happened in the game to kind of just go through what all of that entailed. So um, during the political phase, if you are up and you get to do things, which Lewis is right now, or he just did, then um, you get to choose either one of these little pseudo cards here. These are international, anyone can do those. Or, every, or each power has their own card that has specific things they can do. The first six of those are basically the same, but um, have different minor power effects because different minor powers feel differently um, about different major powers doing things. So what, what did Lewis do? He uh, doubled all production. His production was at, his production multiple was at one half, and so he got to move it up to here, to one. All right, so that seems pretty simple, but in order to do that, I had to add all these little markers to these minor powers here. These ones that are off to the side, they are essentially all in this neutral position. They haven't really committed any way, in any way to any one ideology. So, so if you look here, some of them are affected adversely and some of them are positive, some are negative. More positive than negative. People liked, in general, the idea of Germany producing more. Um, so after you do that and you square it all the way, Lewis had to go into debt, cost him 10, because there's a cost on here. I don't know if I showed you that. This is probably making you dizzy, sorry. Um, see that little dollar, $10? He started with five, so he had to, he had to go $5 into debt, but that's okay, his debt limit is 10, I believe. No, 20, he can go way into debt and be okay. And, you know, getting your production up, he's going to be able to pay that back more easily. So after you've done whatever the political option is, then you have to activate one of the minor powers. Now, what that means is they resolve whatever stack of numbers is on them. Now, right now, it's going to be pretty simple because we just have the one thing from Lewis. Um, but it could be that there is, you know, this, say, this one here, Hungary, which is what we're going to end up activating, could have a marker from you know, France, from USA, from all sorts of different powers, then when it activates, it has to, you know, you take them each in turn and you move them either closer or further away from those powers. Now, since we're in the same ideology, it's one point to move one space towards the Nazis here. So I think we're going to do that. Uh, that should be pretty, pretty simple. And that moves Hungary one step closer to the Germans. So now Hungary is further away from Japan in ideology and equidistant between uh, both Italy and Germany. And so that's the turn. So then after you do that, you have to roll two dice to see if more political stuff happens. Now you have to roll, I think, three or less in order for it, for it to be cut off. So obviously things are gonna keep happening and we'll go on to Italy now and um, I'll resolve that off camera. But just so you know, that's what goes into one political action. Even if it's a fairly simple thing, like just moving this marker up, you have to do all this other stuff too, which is partly what makes the game fun, but also what makes it um, very fiddly. Like, uh, if you're familiar with that word, you have to do a lot of little tiny little things. I also had to mark um, a US entry thing down on a piece of paper. The U.S. entry is 11, since he did it between 1936 and 37. And there's this whole complicated equation, well, there's a, a whole equation with multiple parts that you have to do to figure out what number the U.S. entry has to get to in order for the USA to be able to declare war. Okay, I don't think it makes them automatically declare war, because the USA has a brain, and that brain is Barry. 